Hello everyone, Pete Brooker here. I'm going to give you the summary of my research findings from Unit 3, Assignment 6, Task 2. And these are just going to round up some of the thoughts and points that I've made in the presentation from secondary and primary photos. Now, um, I focused on the Tommy Nutter style, the silhouette and the brand in whole. So when I was doing some digging, I found out that there was actually an exhibition of the Tommy Nutter style that happened nearly 10 years ago. So straight away from that findings, um, you know, I was actually quite astonished that this was not just something that the Tommy Nutter style is not just a style that's just now kind of resurfaced um, in the last couple of years. It's not something that's had a renaissance uh, all of a sudden. It's, you know, it's been something that's been looked at, studied and you know, people. There was obviously a demand for people to want to watch and look at the the Tommy Nutter suits. Otherwise, there wouldn't have been an exhibition from ten years ago. So I would have only have found that out if I wasn't looking online for the the Tommy Nutter suits, and also where to find you know the suits because so few of them are on display. There's one or two that you can see in the Fashion Textile Museum down in Bath. Um, there are archived suits that I've. That Edward Sexton, who who was the cutter with Tommy Nutter, um, has in his collection. I tried reaching out to Edward Sexton a couple of times, and we just couldn't get an interview or or a viewing of these suits together in time for when I had to submit these. Um, you know, and I've actually made a note of that in the presentation. That's not to uh, in any way denigrate Edward Sexton. Uh, it's just basically to say that I was reaching out to him, um, but he's obviously a very busy guy. Uh, and it's just quite hard to see these suits, you know, because they're locked away. They're not there in the public domain. Now, um, in some of the secondary research, I also highlighted the style and the silhouette of what that would look like on people with such a, a diminutive frame or in, you know, on a younger guy nowadays. Um, and it create a debate online. You can see that in figure eight with Matthias Leferf, I believe that's how you pronounce him, wearing vintage Tommy Nutter suits. Now, the debate on this forum or this Instagram post was, is it now a dated look? Um, and if it is a dated look, what is a classic look? You know, what is some what makes something classic versus something dated versus something modern and contemporary? Um, and if you look at say some of the Tommy Nutter suits that he made for Elton John and I've made that, um, I've illustrated that in figure eight, uh, sorry, figure five. Uh, you can see some of the inspirations that people like Tom Ford are making nowadays using some of the Tom, uh, Tommy Nutter designs. So you can see, for example, Miley Cyrus in figure four, she's wearing a Tom Ford pantsuit, but the lapels are obviously very exaggerated. It's, you know, it's a very, it's making a statement and Elton John, who was making statements all the time wearing Tommy Nutty, you can see some similarities there. So uh, I would like now to talk about the primary research and my findings. In the primary research, I went down and did some viewings of an old Roy Strong suit. Sorry, he owned the suit down at the V&A. His, his, his suit was available to view for me. Um, and you have to make appointments, which is actually quite, you know, something very unique. I never knew that you could go down there um, and view suits and view any kind of archives down at the cloth works down at the V&A. And that's all going to get moved to Stratford in a year. So it's going to... Roger, that's my hat. Sorry. Dog is eating my hat. Um, so that is actually, that is actually quite something I don't think a lot of people will know about you know I've spoken to a lot of people about this how I went down and saw the suit I didn't publish any of the pictures because you're not allowed to it's one of the stipulations but as it's for study then they allowed me to take some pictures for this presentation but not a lot of people know that you can go down and actually view all of the the wonderful archived suits um, and artifacts that they have down there at the V&A so I think that is actually something very relevant for a for an editorial and something people would be really interested in uh, and lastly, with my primary research, I went down to see what would have been the old shop on uh, Savile Row, which would have been Tommy Nutter's store, 35A. That's actually, I've since learned by talking to people on, on the Savile Row, that that building would have been knocked down 
and they've replaced it and replaced all the fascias so it's actually unrecognizable now but it's empty um, and that kind of gives you an indication of the struggles that retail is having even on Savile Row where people think maybe it's protected um, you know maybe it's uh, because it's such an iconic street people will go there and spend money regardless it's not the case at all you know nothing is impervious to uh, the strictures and hardships that people are having on Savile Row at the moment and I've also included pictures of the suits that I have took when I took a chance meeting at Chittleborough and Morgan because uh, they were they worked alongside Tommy Natter some of the uh, the cutters there have taken the name of the brand on and you can actually see uh, when I went down there for a chance meeting I literally knocked on the door and I said look I've got a presentation here um, I'm, I'm close to the end of it, I just thought you might like to see it. And they had some old Tommy Nutter suits just hanging on a concertina in the room that I entered. So uh, a gentleman there by the name of Nick was kind enough to bring some, bring one of the suits out for me and a tie. So I got some pictures of that. And what I found fascinating uh, is that they still use some of the cloth that they used in the 70s for these suits for modern day contemporary overcoats that, um, that I've stipulated. Uh, you can see that in, so from figure 12 in that slide, you can see that the overcoat and you can see also the fluffies in the suits. So these are some of my uh, thoughts and surrounding uh, points that I, I've uh, discovered during my secondary and primary research photos. Uh, I hope this was of some use. Thank you. Bye-bye.